Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grand Dead G Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we're still into Trophy Nut's month of memes, and today we're going to be playing Skellige. Skellige, indeed, because Skellige has been really powerful over the past few months. Yeah, mostly because of the card that you're seeing right now, so Fukusia. Um, and I've decided to make a Pirates deck that also uses her to see if that makes Pirates viable in some way. And I think that it kind of does. It's not the perfect meta deck, of course, we're still in the month of memes. But it is a really, really fun deck to play with. Because we're going to be playing with the Pirate McFlurry deck. So the Pirate McFlurry deck, I think the name says it all. It's a pirate deck that uses the Reckless Flurry leading ability to dish out some damage. We also have the Rain Package. Um, I think we can call that officially that right now. The Rain Package, a little bit of discarding, and of course a whole bunch of pirates and ships. Um, as usual, we're going to be going through each and every single card in this deck. You can see the list here already. And you can also import this deck to your own game using the link to the Playgrant website in the description of this video. If you don't want to see the description of all these cards that I'm going to go through, you can also skip right ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below. All right, everybody's still here, let's start going through the cards. So first up, of course, the Squirrel. I need a banish option in this deck just to counter uh, rain decks from my opponent or just to get rid of a very annoying echo card or something like that. So the Squirrel, four power, four, four provisions, and on deploy you banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. Easy as that. And of course, this is my mascot, so uh, we're gonna be including this card occasionally now and then as the banish option to use. Now we have the Pally, basically the same function as the Squirrel, a bit of a um attack card to counter certain decks so the pallet four power for four provisions but instead of banishing we purify a unit the only purify option that we have in this deck to get rid of a defender status to get rid of something on our side of the board it's always handy to have a purifier at least one in the deck somehow and then we have a card that is usually underestimated, the Dimmon Warship. Four power for four provisions, and whenever you play a pirate, you damage self and a random enemy unit by one. So still giving you only four points for four provisions, but if this card dies on that wish, you summon a random bronze pirate from your graveyard to this row, which can be up to eight points with this deck. I'll show you in a minute how that works. But uh, Dimmon Warship is uh, a very, very powerful card because, of course, that means that you can get 12 points for only 4 provisions. And there's a few other ways that this card actually functions in conjunction with some of the other cards. Then we have our first pirate, the Twirsak Invader. So if you resurrect this one with the Demon Warship, you get five up to seven points because this card has Veil and Veteran. Veteran, if you're not familiar with the effect, means that this card is in, uh, this card's base power is increased by one at the start of every round. So at the start of the second round, this becomes a six power card. At the start of the third round, this becomes a seven power card. So up to seven points if you manage to resurrect her with the Demon Warship. And then of course we have the little Hofroos in this Skellige deck as well, so 6 power for 4 provisions. If she is bonded, so there's already another one on the board, you boost the uh, base power by 2, so you increase the base power to 8. And she also has an order ability where she damages herself by 4 and spawns rain for 2 turns on an enemy row. Um, the rain is usually, well, it doesn't give you extra points because of course rain will tick two times. Four points of damage for the four damage that you give yourself, so you're not gaining any points unless she has a little Huffru has armor, but there's no way in this deck to give her armor. But still, this is a uh, 14 point card if you can play both of them in the same uh, round while the other one is on the field. So, pretty good card. There we have one Uncrate Raider, um, which has Veteran as well, so it can go up to 6 power. And on deploy, if you have Bloodthirst 3, so 3 damaged enemy units, you um, gain Zeal, so you can use the Order ability immediately. But the Order ability itself is also damage a unit by 2. So a good low provision card that is also a Pirate. Keep that in mind. Then of course we have two Uncrate Longships, very good to give a little bit of control and basically damaging anything that comes on the field on your opponent's side. So four power, one armor, and when this card is on the melee row, whenever your opponent plays a unit, this ship will deal one damage to it. So again, a ship, um, and it's just a very good five provision card. And now we have the eight point pirates that I was talking about. This card 
is pretty good on its own. So 8 power for 5 provisions and on deploy you move the top card from your deck to your graveyard. But if you have a ship on the board, this ability doesn't trigger. So you just have 8 points for 5 provisions. But with the discard package that is in this deck, there's only, I mean, we have the discard stratagem and we have coral. Um, we can actually put these guys immediately in the graveyard almost ensuring that we pull those eight points with the demon warships and that's basically the uh, tactic with these demon pirates which is also fitting considering the team the demon warship just deploys the demon pirates which is uh how that is supposed to work i think now we have the scepter of storm as i said we have the rain package in here so we have the full rain package so with this we can spawn either biting frost impenetrable fog or torrential rain each spawning their well, relevant weather effect for three turns, but of course we're always going to go for Torrential Rain, giving us rain for three turns. And then in conjunction with Vedermaker, um, who is a uh, six power for six provision card, that increases all row effects by one, or decreases them depending on where you put him. But if you also have Scepter of Storms, you increase the durations of everything by three, or decrease them depending on what you want to do. But usually we're going to be increasing by three, which is going to come in handy for our uh, rain combo in a minute. Now we have Morkvark, also a uh, secondary target for the discard. Um, also counts as a pirate, by the way. So Morkvark is a pirate, five power for seven provisions. And when this unit enters your graveyard during the round, so for example, by discarding, you summon it to your melee row and give it doomed giving you five points on top of coral uh, if you manage to uh, discard this card that way now raiding fleet is our ship tutor so give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns and then play a random bronze unit well bronze ship from your deck so that's either going to be the demon warship or the uncrate long ship so keep that in mind we have only four bronze ships in this deck so if you seen all four of them this tutor is going to be bricked but most of the time you'll still have a ship that actually works with this and then coral we talked about her already but coral is uh, our only discard card here so six power for eight provisions and on her zealed order ability you draw a card and then discard a card from your hand whenever you discard a card you also damage a random enemy unit by two if you manage to play her on the row while you also still have your stratagem you can do that two times so giving you 10 damage and a uh, draw card basically so that's pretty good in total and giving you a little bit of control over what's left in your deck then we have our next pirate hammond seven power for eight provisions and on deploy you move an enemy unit to the other row and give it a bleeding for two turns you also increase that bleeding by one for each adjacent pirate so going up to four potential bleeding so you might have already noticed that i don't use holger blackhand in this deck even though this is a pirate and ship deck to my mind holger is worse than hammond Hammond gives you up to 11 points on deploy and moves the unit to another row. So basically, possibly disabling uh, an engine card that functions on a specific row. Um, Holger only gives you 8 points on deploy and needs another 3 turns to be still alive or functioning to even get to 11. So Hammond, to my mind, is way stronger than Holger, which is why he takes the 8 provision slot and not Holger. So um, there we go, that's my explanation for that. And then we have the uh, the pirate that functions all around that rain package. So Ryogan the Undying, 8 power for 8 provisions. This card starts in your graveyard. And whenever you play or summon this card from the graveyard, you trigger all remaining rain and storm on your opponent's side of the battlefield which means that all of the rain or storm that is still on the field will be triggered all at once so if you have 10 turns of storm which is not something that we're going to be doing uh, i think but if you have 10 turns of storm on a row you trigger all 10 turns of that storm completely so that's 10 damage to the entire row um, this card is insane i've talked about this on twitter as well already this card is too powerful i think it's not really balanced because it basically breaks the way weather is supposed to work. But again, this card is in this deck. It's a pirate deck. It's a weather kind of, it has the rain package, so it fits perfectly. And uh, I might be able to show off the uh, amazing storm combo with this. Now we have Juno of Belhaven, which is, of course, who is not a pirate, uh, but six power for nine provisions and on deploy you destroy a damaged enemy unit, which basically gives us a tall removal card that can just wipe uh, a unit that is damaged. Um, all the rain that we're deploying 
uh, gives us an easy way to damage units. So as long as they're not boosting immensely, this card will be able to destroy whatever unit you want. Now we have the Covenant of Steel, which is also a pirate, but also much more importantly, a defender, seven points um, for, and also two armor with the defender status. So uh, on that row, your opponent will only be able to hit that card directly. And if this card drops down to six power or lower, you gain an extra point of armor at the end of every one of your turns. So very good in taking damage, very good in defending a row, as long as it's not purified, of course. Now we have Morgvark again, the Heart of Terror, the pirate version of Morgvark. 5 power for and 1 armor for 10 provisions, but all deploy you damage an enemy unit by 1 and you repeat this ability until that target is damaged. Meaning that you remove all boosts from a unit and one more point. Um, also all armor by the way, so if that unit is not yet damaged, you go through all the armor, all the boosts, and then one more point, and that is the end of that. So basically getting rid of like the um, the boosts on a high consume unit for example, but uh, yeah, or, or just certain cards like Sunset Wanderers get destroyed, Colgrim gets destroyed, not that you see Colgrim all that much, but there's a lot of cards that are very vulnerable to Morg Fark. But if there's no boost units on the board, this card will do jack shit, so it's a bit of a trade-off with this card but usually you find a target for this and of course another pirate so functions very well in our archetype next up of course the main pirate of this deck croc on crate seven power for ten provisions and on deploy you give two armor to three pirates or ships in your hand uh, usually you want to go for either the demon warships which will be able to trigger very well on the next ability that we're going to be explaining. The uh, warships also, um, the, the uncreate longships I suppose, uh, also work very well just as a defense. A defensive measure because that means that the warships, the longships, I keep saying warships, the longships actually go to four power and three armor which means that your opponent needs seven points of damage to take that out which is going to be very very tricky to do. And aside from that we also, we, you can just choose whatever other unit that you want to add armor to. Defender of course is always a good uh, choice as well, the Covenant of Steel can always use some extra armor. Add armor to Morgfark as well, because that actually functions into his uh, Croc on Crate's passive ability. Because whenever you play a pirate or a ship next to Croc, you damage that unit and the lowest power enemy unit by each other's power. So that means, for example, if you put the Demon Warship next to Croc and there's a three power unit on the other side of the field, you damage the Demon Warship by three and that unit by four, basically trading each other's power. Um, if you hit if you have armor on the unit that you played, of course, that takes the damage. The demon warships, you want to get that destroyed, so that's not too bad to have that damage on that. So very good way of clearing your opponent's board. And on top of all of that, Croc is also able to damage a unit by one every two turns on order. Um, so yeah, very versatile old leader card that is now um, going to be the the yeah the, the crux of this deck. I like to start start with this card even just because of how powerful it is. Then to round out the um, rain package, we have Full Mars. So six power for twelve provisions on deploy. You spawn and play Tears of Siren, which means that you get uh, rain for two turns on an enemy row and a Deafening Siren on your side of the field. So already playing for twelve points. But if he survives a single turn, you can replace rain on an enemy row with storm for the same duration. Which means that if you've been able to stack rain on the same row with uh, the Tears of Siren itself, uh, the Scepter of Storms, and then of course Vadermaker, on top of maybe the little Hofroos, you can have a lot of rain on the same row, which is increased by uh, Vadermaker even further. And then you can change that into storm with Fulmar Storm. Damages all units on that row by one instead of just two random units by one, which is what rain does. So uh, very good to do that right before you re resurrect Ryogon. And we're going to be doing that, of course, with Fukushima. Fukushima 4 power for 13 provisions on the boy. You play a Skellige unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less and give it doomed. And then you spawn rain on the opposite row with a duration equal to the unused provision. So if you play Ryogon, you also get another two turns of rain, which will be immediately triggered by Ryogon himself. You can see him on the card here as well, because uh, Fukushima and Ryogon were lovers, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a very sad story. Because um, basically this is when uh, Ryogon is resurrected by Fukushima and she basically relinquishes her power as a sea witch just to bring the man back to life. It's a very sad uh, story, but very powerful card still. If Ryogon has been banished, there's plenty of other targets to resurrect. You can resurrect Croc to do his ability again. 
you can resurrect Coral to have another discard. Um, there's plenty of things you can do with Fukushima and everything will work. You can even resurrect Morgfark if you want to, just to have another very big hit. And then as I said, we went with the Mask of Uroboros for our stratagem card. So on order, you draw a card and then discard a card and you also spawn two crows in your melee row. So four points. And on top of that, you trigger Coral again in the same turn, possibly uh, giving you two discards as well. So very good stratagem, uh, especially for Skellige here. And then of course, Reckless Flurry, our leader ability, is an order ability where you split three damage randomly between all enemy units, ignoring their armor, very important. And you can do this three times over the course of a match. So very good to take out the first few units that your opponent plays, specifically, uh, especially in the final rounds, um, where you want to save up your charges for. But uh, yeah. With all of that said, let's head into a few example matches to see how we fare against um, rank 1 I'm, I'm at at the moment. So we'll see uh, how that works out. So first up today, we are facing another rain deck ourselves. So that is a hard matchup. Usually your opponent has way more options to use the rain. Um, and we really need this squirrel right now. And I'm hoping we're getting it. We're not getting it yet, so we're going to have to see. Um, I also don't start, so I don't get a discard here. I'm gonna get rid of a Tweerstock Invader, and there we have the Squirrel, that is really good. The Demon Warship is useless for now, so might as well get rid of that as well. There we go, we get Croc, which is always a good start. Um, and I think I'm gonna actually use the Uncreate Longship first. There we go, let's put that down on the field. And we'll see what our opponent does against that. So the, the longship is a good way to start if you're not the... Um, well, if you just want to deal some damage. Because usually I also start with Croc. But against this matchup, that's going to be very, very dangerous. We get the Mushy Truffle as a start. Which is a weird way to start. Because, of course, you won't get the carryover if I don't... If I win this round. I'm going to have to be careful here. Because there's a few cards that I really don't want to use. Um, so let's put a little Hofru down. She's also 6 points, so basically doing the same as our opponent does. And then we get Coral. Of course, that deck usually goes for the discard package itself. And we're going to be hit twice because we're going to use the Stratagem as well. So now our little Hofru actually went to um, 2 power which means that we can easily use the ability. Now we are going to get two extra points um, compared to what we otherwise would have gotten. So little Hofru on that front row. There's plenty of targets over there. I'm going to use... Um, do we use Croc now? I think I'm not going to win this round anyway. So might as well use Squirrel now to banish Ryogan. There we go. And there was already a... Uh, wait, was there a Squirrel? Why don't we say... Oh, they discarded their own squirrel. That is not... That is a very weird choice. I mean, I could use Croc now. Croc on crate. It's not going to give us that many points. Um, but it is something. Uh, do you know there's also a good option? Because there's not going to be a very tall target, I think, in that deck. But let's see what we can get with Croc first. Um, we use the two armors on these units. Now we're going to see what happens next. Get a few one-powered units over there. But it's just trying to see if I can get my opponent to pass. A Messenger of the Sea. So Messenger of the Sea is one of the most broken cards in Skelliger right now. Because Messenger of the Sea boosts itself by whatever damage that the, um, the rain does to my units. So it is absolutely ridiculous. It's not even linked to like the opposite row or anything. It just increases itself by the amount of damage on rain. Which is silly. Because uh, now that means they have a four. Yeah, that's four points every single turn without having to do anything for it. The Messenger of the Sea is broken. But yeah, let's just pass. We're not going to win this round anyway. Okay, next round, we're doing pretty okay cards-wise. I would like Fulmar before we head into the final round, but it seems like our opponent is hell-bent on trying to uh, destroy us here. They are allowed to actually play another card. So I'm going to see what they're going to do, because they might actually pass now. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that gives us the opportunity to get rid of a Dimmon Pirate. Uh, so now that is in the graveyard, which is pretty good. I'm going to keep the Pallor, I think. I feel like there might be a Defender coming in. Although we can actually get rid of the Defender with um, Hammond as well. So if I can get better cards, which is definitely an option here. So I still want Fulmar. We get a Demon Warship, which is really good. We have about four Pirates in hand here as well. So that is fine. Um, the Uncreate Raiders are also really good. But Fulmar is better if I can get him. And we got Coral. So that means that we still have a chance. Um, I can also get rid of... It, actually, it doesn't actually hurt to play the Demon Warship now. It's just a good way. They can destroy it whenever they want. I'm not going to be sad about them destroying that card. And I have an 8-point pirate in my uh, graveyard at the moment. So that's not going to be a problem whatsoever. And it's also the only one right now. Yeah, it is. So little Hafru going in next. I could do the discard now, but I don't think it's that useful, although it's, it might. It might. So let's just use the discard. Uh, so Coral into another Demon Pirate, that's not that bad. And a Morgue Fark to discard and we get that 5 points on that row as well. I don't wanna, do want to be careful to not row stack too much. And there we go, there's the pure. damn it. There's the Defender now. Um, there's not much I can do about that aside from moving it in a minute. Um, there is a ship on the board, so I can actually just use the Demon Pirate without a problem here. Um, I'm not going to get full Mars, so I don't get the full combo. It's going to be something at least. So there we go. Some more damage coming in. And now we get Sigdrifa's right, which is going to be resurrecting Coral herself. Okay, I might be able to get rid of the Defender with Junold. So there we have Morkvark as well, so basically copying us. If I can get a single flurry hit on um, the Covenant of Steel. There we go, that's perfect. And now we can use Junold to actually hit the Covenant of Steel of, and get rid of that in one spell swoop. I'm going to leave Morkvark till the very end. For when we're able to use... Well, we're going to be seeing another Messenger of the Sea with a lot of rain. So there's the rain coming in. And I can get rid of all of those points with Morgfark. So that's not that much of a problem. Um, I'm also almost able to get a couple of Defenders down. Well, I can get the Covenant of Steel down and then put Hammond in between that. So there we get Bride of the Sea, which is going to resurrect the Defender again. There we go. Interesting. It's actually not a problem. I can get rid of the Defender in a minute. So definitely not a problem. So let's just put that down. Defender gets <laughs> gets hit actually. And uh, next turn my Demon Warship might actually die. And put another uh, Demon Pirate over there. There's a Messenger of the Sea. And now that card cannot be moved again. And there we go. Demon Pirate goes down. So I can move the Defender now. Which I am actually going to do because that gives me the most points on the bleed here. Uh, so put that down in between here. Bleed down the defender over there. That's about it. It's going to be pretty close. There might be a lot of rain, but they can't do anything with Ryogon there. And then we get hit on the armor with Coral, so that was really lucky as well. We might actually get another bit of rain. There we go. I'm actually wondering where I should put the rain on. Probably best just to put it on top of the um, the front row. Even though I can get rid of most of the points with um, with Morgvarg in a minute. And there we get Fulmar, but Fulmar is just going to turn that into Storm later on. And you can actually choose whichever row that's going to be. So um, yeah, let's just do uh, Vader Maker over here on the front row. So increasing that to five turns of rain. And then in a minute we're going to do the uh, Fukushima combo with Ryogan as our opponent. And unless they have another Banish, which is also definitely an option. Freya's Blessing. Ooh, that's going to be another Messenger of the Sea, isn't it? Ah, crap. Okay. Sad. But not something I could have done anything against. I've done the best that I could have done. Uh, so Fukushima now on the front row. Yeah, just to avoid getting hit with too much storm. Um, putting Ryogan on the same row. 
There we go, that's five turns of rain. Um, I'm gonna leave the Reckless Flurry Charges until the very end, but I don't think anything is gonna come of it. It's close, but not close enough, so Fukushima is gonna come in with another little half through, and that is another six points of rain. And now on the front row, of course, yeah, okay, never mind. It's not gonna happen, is it? Uh, so I can now put Morg Fark on the back row and hit the Messenger of the Sea, which is gonna be quite a lot of points, but definitely not enough to get past those broken cards. Because um, I didn't want to put any of those in my deck because I knew those were broken. Um, and they don't fit with the pirate team, but so there we go. That was actually pretty close. It was only two points of difference. Oh no, there was another hit there. Three points of difference against a full-blown um, rain deck. Yeah, yeah, not much I could have done there. So let's try the next match. And we are facing monsters, so overwhelming hunger. So that might be a few things. So either it's Dead Wish or... It might be just Vi, which in that case it's going to be really annoying. But we'll see how well uh, we, we can work against this, because Vi is actually not that bad, as, considering we can get Morgfar, because right now that's not actually the case. Uh, so we have Coral, we can discard the Demon Pirate with that, so we have a target for the Demon Warship. The Uncreate Longship might not actually be... I have a very good hand at the moment. Um, Uncreate Longship, and there we get Morgfar, but... My hand is filled with golds. Um, Junot might not actually be that useful, because most of the units will not be damaged. Because they're going to be boosted. We'll see how this works out. We have a discard, so we can at least get rid of a little bit there. That seems to be basic death wish, but even Vi can start with that. So, Coral. Let's uh, discard, uh, draw a card, and then discard the Demon Pirate. There we go. It's a pretty good starting plate. We also got Raiding Fleet now, and then of course we get uh, Predatory Dive. Um, so let's put the little half through down. We're still ahead with this, and I didn't have another discard, so it didn't really matter that I lost Coral there. But that means, yeah, they have the other Darkest Boar in hand. That was weird. Um, I am going to push this pretty hard. So I'm going to put Croc down on the field, and then boost uh, the three cards that we have in hand by, well, two armor. Nothing too fancy. But you'll see why we do that in a minute. Because you can actually use Croc to damage your own units as well. So if you really want to kill that uh, that uh, Demon Warship, uh, this might actually be pretty good. Uh, so if I use the Demon Warship now right next to Croc, I'm going to kill something of 4 damage. And it is that one, so now I can kill that Fuka. Um, that was actually pretty handy. So now the uh, Demon Warship is already at 2 power. If it dies, we're going to get that 8 points uh, Warship from our hand as well. Hmm. It's a peculiar first... Well, next card there. So I'm going to use the Raiding Fleet on the Kikimore Worker. And I'm not going to put the Longship right next to Croc, because of course that's going to damage it, and I don't really want to damage that uh, very useful card. Opponent is deciding which card they're going to draw. And they're really playing safe at the moment. They're really... I don't know what they're saving up for. Probably for some Dead Wish shenanigans. And then we get Were Rat. So that is going to be a chonky boy. A very chonky boy. Um, but I can actually move that card. Not that it's going to be that useful. Um, and put a bit more bleeding on it. Because I can get rid of that... Um, that Arcaspore, I can actually damage it as well, so I mitigate the damage that I take. Um, so let's put that on the Wear Rat. And that's going to take another hit off the Demon Warship. And that's going to be my final card, I'm not going to actually do much more. And there's Vi. Oh wow, so it is a Vi deck. Okay, I'm going to pass on that. So we still have two bleeding. Um, now they're going to play Vi again. Vi is going to be 10. But there's two bleeding on the board, and that gets hit, so I don't think that's enough. It's not enough. No, even with the rats, we're just thinking about that. That's not enough, you're gonna have to do that again, buddy. There we go. We get also thunder, and that is also not enough, because that's... <laughs> okay, that was a, a peculiar choice of our opponents, because even that is not enough, so that's 2020. I think we have this. I think we have this, but maybe our opponent allows us to use the uh, the rain combo, which is basically set up right now. Um, yeah, Junold is not going to be useful, I think. Most of our opponents are going to be boosted. 
Uh, although I could actually. I'm going to leave Juno there and then the Paladin Covenant of Steel. I have the rain. I have. I mean. Come at me, bro. <laughs> so, Covenant of Steel first. There's not really a good other option here. I need that defending down. Oh man. This is going to be interesting. So defending down, so if there is another predatory dive, I'm actually going to lose it. But I think our opponents just rage quit it. I think they're gone. I think they're not coming back. They just they just shut down the game instead of forfeiting, so that's a, a very typical rage quit. Um, but yeah, I think against Vi you usually should win if you have more Gvark as a final say. Because yeah, your opponent will not be able to defend that enough because we have a paladin if they put down a defender as well so there we go that's the first win and next up we have northern realms that might actually work in our favor northern realms is pretty vulnerable to all the control that we can dish out so let's see how this works if this is gonna work out correctly i think i'm gonna keep the squirrel for once um i'm gonna get rid of the twirsock invader and little half through yeah and then we got a paladin Okay, not the best starting hand. And we get a defender, so that is pretty okay. We can actually purify that defender away and nothing that our opponent can do about that. Basically giving us a few options to uh, get rid of the next units. I also have three of the four cards of, my, uh, of the rain combo, so I'm just going to purify that defender away. Making that shiny brand new. And then we get Roach Merciless. Ooh. Ooh. This is Commandos. This is Commandos. Okay. That is gonna be fun. I'm gonna play it safe for now then. Um, and just put down the Uncrate Longship. That, that is crew, right? Yeah, that's gonna be crew. That's both of them are soldiers. I'm waiting for the Amphibious Assault. I want to get rid of that Amphibious Assault with Squirrel. I could also banish just one of the Commandos with Squirrels. Giving them one less Commando. Um, I'm just going to pass. Although... No, I don't want to pass. I do want to do something. But there's not much I can do. That glorious hand of mine just doesn't look that glorious anymore. Um, Junot maybe? Onto that trebuchet? Yeah, let's just use Junot on that trebuchet. Let's get rid of that so they don't have their um, damage engine anymore. They might actually pass. Boiling oil. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass. <laughs> I think they knew that that was coming, but... Yeah, I'm really curious how this is gonna... What they're gonna do. Because now they have two options. They can actually keep going to get as many commandos, which they don't. Or they're gonna go for triple commandos. Trying to force their way into three rounds of commandos, which is also an option. And if I can get, of amphibious, get rid of Amphibious Assault in this round, then that's going to be all the better, isn't it? I do not... Do I have a... I don't have a pirate in... No. So, the Dimmon Warship is not that useful. Um, Fukushima was the final card that we were missing. And if I can get a Tiscarder, that would be better. But the, the Three Star Invader is also a good... I'm gonna get rid of Mark Fark. And we get the Uncrate Longship. Okay. And we get Princess Pavetta. Shuffling all those uh, commandos back into the deck. And of course, none of them are now in the graveyard. Uh, I'm just gonna do Raiding Fleet. I know it's a Demon Warship that is basically useless, but it does give us a little bit of a head start, I would say. They can actually check my graveyard if they want to. I don't know if they realize that I don't have any pirates, because this is a, basically a bluff. Now we get a Karak Marine. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, Tweersock Veteran, which is not going to be enough to get us the round if they pass now, but they're going to pass now, of course. I could do Hammond here, but I think the uh, Uncreate Longship is better to get rid of. I have so many good cards in, in the deck still. So, there we go. And then we pass as well, so that is fine. We do have a lot of row removal with the rain combo, so I think we can definitely handle this matchup. I guess we'll see soon enough. So the defender is really good, the demon warship is also good. 
And Squirrel is actually useless right now. We don't um, have the benefit there. There's an older pirate. I think little Hafru can go, we get Morgvark. I don't even have Croc. No, yeah, I, I didn't even start with Croc this time because I didn't have him. And Coral was there as well, so none of that fancy discarding magic. Um, yeah, let's start with the Dimmon Warship again. That gives us an extra damage stick on the first card that our opponent plays, but of course the first card that our opponent plays could very well be those commandos. And we get Burning Oiled immediately, which gives us those seven points immediately as well, so I don't really mind. Um, could put down the Defender now, but that seems like a waste. I'm gonna put down the Uncreate Raiders, because again that gives us an extra two damage on top of the Reckless Flurry charges that we have, so we, can, we have total control of the round at the moment and we also have a nice pocket for Hammond in a minute. Now we get the blue stripes commando getting zeal I'm assuming, yep there we go. And they're getting the two other ones now. If I get lucky just a little bit I might actually kill all of them in one go. So there's one. Um, I'm gonna do this again. And I go all on that one. Okay, so now it's impossible for me to actually get rid of all of them. Um, so I am going to kill this one. Um, but there's nothing else I can do aside from just putting more Fark on the field. And now we got King Foltest. Ooh, and I don't have Junold anymore. Aha, but I can use Hammond to move King Foltest to the other row. So that is not a problem at all. There we go. So now Foltest can just sit there and die unless they're able to place oh yeah okay okay fair enough that was well played i could try but it's gonna be useless um i'm gonna just put down the defender in the back here uh so i can start setting up for what comes next i'm not gonna be able to stop the onslaught of commandos so i'm gonna go full into a very big row of rain in a minute. Ooh, yeah, that's really good. That's a that's a big juicy row there. Um, I can actually add rain. I can actually add rain to the front row now instead. I'm gonna actually do that. So Scepter of Storms can go over there. It's not a problem if that gets destroyed. I can put the rain on the front row because now there's only two units. So that's definitely gonna hit Foltest. If I can hit Foltest again, I don't. But yeah, he's bleeding as well. So, fingers crossed. That's the basic idea after the uh, for the rain combo. We get... Yeah, that, that row is getting stacked a little bit. So that bleeding goes onto there one more time. If he gets hit with rain next, Foltest is down. But next up, Fulmar onto the rain row in the back. And sadly, the rain doesn't hit Foltest, but now Foltest is going to get bled unless he gets boosted by something. Which I would have thoughts that they would have done already. We get Adalia into what I'm supposing is a scout. No. A trebuch a ballista. I was gonna say trebuchet. Shame on me. Um fair enough, but now Foltest is dead. There we go, Foltest dies. Um Vadermaker on the front row. So increasing the rain up to four turns. And then putting Fulmar over uh, here. Because that's going to take care of a lot of the uh, engine units over there. And then we're going to put Fukushima on the front row. And then maybe we're going to get lucky with the uh, Morgfark. I think we got this unless something really crazy happens. I think we have this. The Defender is starting to get hit actually. I don't know why you would hit the Defender there. There's not going to be anything hiding behind that. And then we're going to get extra armor because of that. So, Fukushima is going to be a lot of points. Now it looks like I should have put Storm on the front row. But again, if we use Storm on the front row, then it would have just swapped around. So, Fukushima on the front row. So, we do put the rain on their front row. Because we don't want to replace the Storm with the rain. And now we're going to resurrect uh, Ryogan into the back row. And we get boom, 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 boom. There we go. And I think that basically uh, made the match there. And I think Morgvark is probably better off hitting the Frigate now, because the Frigate is going to be another 3 points. 
Yeah, if I hit... Ooh, no, I can hit that, whatever that is going to be. If that is something really juicy, so a very low provision unit, that's going to get boosted to the moon. Yeah, that... Yeah. Definitely going to hit that now. <laughs> There's a lot of ballistas all of a sudden. They really want to kill that defender. I, I don't know why, but... There we go. More quark down, hitting the ballista in the face for a couple of hits. And that should be it. 26, 66, yeah, six points ahead. Even with the three extra, well, the five extra points on the board right now. With the hits from the ballista. And the, uh, yeah, the volunteer from the, the ship, the frigate. Yeah, we could just get bombardment and that's... Five siege, siege engines? No, four siege engines. I think the frigate actually counts as a siege engine. Doesn't make any sense at all, but it's a siege engine. There we go. You call that a storm. Yeah, that finally really fits at the moment. So there we go. The uh, effect of the pirate's deck on a commando's deck. Yeah, really not the best uh, matchup there for our opponent. But uh, yeah, that was another win. And that was it for the showcase of the Pirate McFlurry deck. Again, I know it's not the best deck in the Skellige faction at the moment, especially with Rain going all out um, and the very, very fine-tuned uh, normal Flurry deck that you see in the meta reports. But it is a lot of fun to play because you have a little bit of everything. You have the discards with Coral. You have the Rain package with Fukushima into Ryogon. It's in there as well. We don't benefit from the messengers but that's just a bullshit card anyway um we do have a lot of removal options as well and of course glorious croc on crate um if your rear gun gets banished don't forget you can use that weather just earlier in the round then instead of trying to stack them all at the very end for a big point boost you can do that just a little bit earlier and then use Fukushima to resurrect croc morgfar covenant of steel juno of Balhaven. it's there's a lot of options for Fukushima even aside from rear gun but if you have him he's the better option and then the uh, Dimmon warships are very powerful, don't underestimate those. If they can get a Dimmon pirate from your um, graveyard, then that's just basically 12 points for 4 provisions, which is really, really good. And you can just slam them right next to Croc on Crate to uh, immediately destroy him and get that pirate out of the board as well, giving you a, a massive 12 point boost in one go. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. Um, let me know what you think of it, because this is going to be the end of the episode. So again, you can find the uh, link to the Play Gwent website in the description of this video. You can use that to import the deck to your own game. And just remember to upvote it there as well if you liked it. Um, I really want to know what you guys think of this deck as well. Uh, I know it's not a perfect deck, as I said multiple times already. Um, but it is, it just, I, I really feel for the pirate and ship archetype. I really feel like there's something we can do there to make it as powerful as it could be. But uh, yeah, I think it's lacking just a few key cards to make this, uh, this archetype really, really glorious. But with that said, I'd like to thank you all enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech in the month of memes that we're holding here on the channel. And uh, I'd like to see you in the next episode where we're gonna be playing a very meme Northern Realms deck. Yeah, no mages, no mages this time. We're gonna be playing something completely different in Northern Realms that you might have not seen all that much of in, uh, well, not the faction, I mean, I mean the deck specifically in this uh, month. So uh, I'd like to see you back for that. So thank you again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.